Sometimes out of tragedies can come good things, and that's what we have found. That, that uh, this, this sadness that we felt and the pain that we felt, it, it, the first day we walked out there it and saw terrible. the damage, it was, it was very bad. And what we've seen now is we have people coming together, uh, not just locally. We, I mean, we've had uh, York County, Hamilton County, Clay County, all these people from around this near area. And letters from around the country. And, and yes, Nebraska and beyond across mm -hmm. the United States, and donations coming in. Mm -hmm. And we're very positive that if these uh, students tonight, if they will be able to raise their ten thousand dollars, and the Henderson State Bank matches that. We have enough money for the restoration. explain a little bit how this fundraiser got started. Well, our NHS members, we were reading the newspaper and we saw what went on with the vandalism of the cemetery. And it really hit home to all of us because we all had Mrs. Ratzleff for our fourth grade teacher. And she taught us the importance of that cemetery and how old it was and just how important it was. So to most of us, it hurt that someone could do something like that and we wanted to help. And so we started out with, we'd do a few cake raffles and try to raise a little bit and help out as much as we could. And then Henderson State Bank agreed to match whatever we made up to $10,000. So then it got kicked up a couple notches because <laughs> that was a big opportunity. We could raise $20,000. So we started, we did a cake raffle. We've done several things. This concert has, been our biggest fundraiser. And thank you so much for coming out tonight, guys. It really helps. Um, I've, I have the pleasure of welcoming, welcoming our performer tonight. He's very talented, and you all are in for a treat. So please help me welcome Paul Siebert. Mm -hmm. Now, Grandpa, can you tell me about the echoes of an arrow? And of the hope that's brought you here from afar across the sea Can you tell me everything that you can remember So I can tell my children like you're telling to me His story started way across the great Atlantic Ocean And in a black and white photograph he showed me his family He told me about his motherland told me how he loved her the freedom just was something that she couldn't offer me so grandpa can you tell me about the echoes of an arrow of the hope that's brought you here from far across the sea can you tell me everything that you can remember so i can tell my children i can tell it to me sail through the harbor i see livers standing I can see her light shining bright for me. So my grandpa put his hand to task and he hammered out living, bending iron and shaping steel to serve his brother's needs. He said, take to heart the spirit of fire that brought you across the ocean. You got a daring soul pushing on, knowing that you're free. So, Grandpa, can you tell me about the echoes of an era of the hope that's brought you here from far across the sea? Can you tell me everything that you can remember? So I can tell my children like you'll tell it to me. Uh, I grew up in Farmers Valley. My great-grandfather, Duick, uh, family owned a farm 
just a half a mile to the downstream from the Farmer's Valley Mill. I grew up a mile and a half from there, right on the West Fork of the Big Blue River as well. And uh, interesting story, my dad, uh, uh, of course, when he was young, uh, my great-grandpa was getting very feeble in his days. And so one Sunday afternoon, he called all the children in around him, and uh, he was feeble enough that he whispered this little story to Grandma. Then Grandma, great-grandma, told the boys what, what he had said. And I can just imagine all these young fellas sitting around Grandpa on a Sunday on a Sunday afternoon, itching to get out and ride bike and do whatever they did back in those days. That must have been in the 1940s, I'm guessing. Anyways, he, uh, of course, spoke low German, and uh, Dad would tell me these stories when I was a kid in low German, and so I learned them so and so much. And I'm going to repeat one of the stories in low German, and I know a lot of you folks here speak low German, and I'm going to apologize up front. Now, I get by with this everywhere else I go because no one else knows low German. <laughs> but it went something like this. He said, Youngest Zede to Hans, I came from the Villa Welt, on Eck Valley Droteva, do ha i nush floor, do essa here, so fail beta, so go, Eck Val Hai, for spreken wie dort und dit sie de ma believe. Yo, dort vel ik ha. Oh, you can go ahead and laugh now, you guys gotta understand it. <laughs> It's a little bit rough, but basically what it said is, boys, young boys, he's talking to the boys, I have a tale to tell you. I came from the wild world, and you don't know how good you have it here. Please promise me that you'll never go back across the ocean. In my travels, I will tell people, I'm from Farmers Valley, Nebraska, and I get a lot of these historians scratching their heads, and I can just tell. And after the program, they'll come up to me and they say, well, we don't know of any time by the name of Farmers Valley. And I'm going, well... You know, even some of the maps up as far as late as in 1930 showed Farmer's Valley as a town. Um, if, if we don't really have time tonight to go into all the Nebraska history. Uh, by the way, if you have any question about that, there was an excellent book put out by Mrs. Ratzel's fourth grade class on all the history of Farmer's Valley. And if you're very interested in that, I'm sure you can get in touch with her and get one of those. I, I got a lot of my information out of there, so I hope that's right. <laughs> it is. I know it is. It's been checked. Uh, but anyways, Farmer's Valley was the place they chose to come. As you can see, there's York listed there, Fairmont, Grafton, Harvard, uh, some of the little towns there. Um, and a mill was built on the river down there, the West Fork of the Big Blue River. It's called the Farmer's Valley Mill, another great ink and pen drawing by my sister. Uh, and this is what the mill would have looked like somewhat in the, in the 1880s. Uh, and also to the right there is a flower bag from the last people that ran the mill, the Yost Mills. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't able to come up with any other remnants of any other kind of flower bags, however, a lot of history in the different types of uh, flowers that were ground there. And of course the blacksmith was involved huge in putting all of that together, all the metal pieces and parts of the grist mill and all that. Amazing how the blacksmith ties into every aspect of life. And when I do the school programs for little kids, that's the one thing that I, I keep bringing it back to, is that everything in this picture revolves around that man standing in the center, just to get him to back to the point so they understand why the blacksmith is there. This song is called The Blacksmith's Son. Oh, me father is a blacksmith and I am a blacksmith's son. He taught me everything I know until the time had come that I had learned me trade so well that I could say true. My father is a blacksmith, and now I'm a blacksmith too. Now when I was a little lad, I watched my father work. He bid me fetch and carry, and from that I'd never shirk. I stood beside the forge all day, wanting to lend a hand, and watching all the different jobs so I could understand. Oh, my father is a blacksmith, and I'm a blacksmith's son. He taught me everything I know until the time had come That I had learned me trade so well that I could say true Me father is a blacksmith and now I'm a blacksmith too <laughs> oh, By the way, I have to tell you there's a number of pen and ink drawings in here tonight that are going to be going into the book that I'm putting out and all these pen and ink drawings are done by my sister Cindy so. And there's going to be about a dozen of them. So if you've ever seen it, you can work on it. 
they are absolutely fantastic. So I think the, the book is actually going to be better than the music program. So here we go. <laughs> in the east or in the west this glorious yankee nation is the greatest and the best we have room for all creation and our banner is unfurled here's a general invitation to the people of the world come away come away come right away come from every nation come from every way our lands they are broad enough so don't be alarmed Cause my Uncle Sam is rich enough to buy us all a farm St. Lawrence marks our northern line while faster waters flow And the Rio Grande our southern bound way down to Mexico From the great Atlantic Ocean where the sun begins to dawn Leap across the Rocky Mountains far away to Oregon enough to buy us all a farm. Now welcome warm and hearty, do we give the sons a toil to come to the west and settle and labor on free soil. And Uncle Sam stands ready with a child upon each arm to give them all a welcome to a lot upon his farm. Come away, come away. Come from every way Our lands, they are broad enough So don't be alarmed For my Uncle Sam is rich enough To buy us all a farm Come away, come away Come right away Come from every nation Come from every way Our lands, they are broad enough So don't be alarmed For my Uncle Sam is rich enough To buy us all a farm currently still stands out there at Farmers Valley. There's been several there. Um, I was able to live in this house for a number of years and a uh, little kind of a side funny story while I was living there. I was there about six years um, out there and uh, while I was there I thought, you know, this used to be a little township. There was a school and a post office and a church and uh, you know, a lot of traffic in and out of there. And so I thought, you know, uh, uh, being as I'm here, I'm just going to go ahead and proclaim myself mayor. <laughs> And so as far as I know, I'm still mayor of Farmers Valley, not that that and three dollars wouldn't get you a Starbucks coffee. Uh, but uh, so I'm, I'm, so far as I know, still self-proclaimed mayor of Farmers Valley. And by the way, I, 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 lay, I named Dave Ely the constable. So if you're down there and you're causing trouble, you got to deal with Dave. <laughs> so, but while I was living there, it was such a beautiful home to live in, and I just so much enjoyed living down there. The recreation and the beauty was just, uh, for Nebraska, it's just one of the coolest places you can imagine to live down on the river and I had grown up just a mile and a half down river from there and I'd always dreamed about what it would be like to be at that place um, and so when I was getting ready to leave I was getting all forlorn about it and I thought you know there is one thing I can do I can write a song about this and so I I sat on the porch one night and I was looking out to the west by the way this house as you're looking at it faces the west and right in front of the yard there's a huge cottonwood tree um, I haven't tried this for sure, but I'm guessing it would probably take three grown men to reach around it and touch fingertips. The, the base is very, very large. And it was a late afternoon in August, and the, the, the cottonwood leaves were doing their thing, and just a beautiful sound. The metal arcs were singing, and I was looking into the west, and you know, in Nebraska we don't have a lot of scenery, but the corn was all tasseled. And into the west was this big purple and pink and shell blue sky with the sun kind of bouncing off of it, and I was just going, ah. And I thought to myself, you know, I can write a song.
you're seedy now while holding down my claim. And my fiddles are not always served the best. And the mice play shyly around me as I settle down to rest in my little old sod shanty on my claim. Oh, the hinges are of leather and the windows have no glass. And the boardroom lets the howling blizzards in. And I hear the hungry coyote as he slinks up through the grass round my little old sod shanty on my claim. Yet I rather like the novelty of living in this way. Though my bill of fare is always rather tame But I'm happy as a clam on my land from Uncle Sam In my little old side shanty on my claim Oh, the hinges are of leather and the windows have no glass And the board roof lets the howling blizzards in And I hear the hungry coyote as he slinks up through the grass Round my little old side shanty on my claim Round my little old side shanty on my claim Uh, we have a really interesting story that happened right here in Farmer's Valley. Uh, as you can see, the uh, cold and frosty morning song that I'm going to play talks a little bit about the Easter blizzard of 1873. Uh, a young lady and her son uh, died, froze to death, uh, right down there in Farmer's Valley. An interesting long story about how that happened, but sometimes we romantically think about, you know, what it would have been like to live back in those days and how neat it would have been to be the pioneers, but they were very, very tough times. And uh, this is a stark example of that. On the right, you can see the, uh, the gravestone of Mary and Otto, uh, and Kaylee, and a uh, real interesting epitaph on this. Uh, and you can read it at the top. Remember, my friends, as you pass by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, you soon shall be. Prepare for death and follow me. A lot of children buried over in Farmer's Valley. We don't see that sort of thing anymore. We're, we're way past that, which it's a wonderful thing. But it was awful tough life. Well, this next song always reminds me of those kind of days. The song is called The Cold and Frosty Morning. I'm just going to play a little bit of it here, but I always like to play this one during the middle of July. <laughs> so, the Cold and Frosty Morning. <laughs> see the outcome of the uh, of the trial that happened with the young fellow that did the, did the vandalism out there today. I don't know all the particulars, but uh, through the law system, we're, we're making some headways. And tonight with a group like this, um, we're going to make some headways. And what they did back in those days is the same that we're doing now. They got the communities together. And then when there was a, a tragedy or something like that, they went to get together and enjoy themselves. Barn dances were something that was, was common back then. Uh, I'm going to play just a little bit of a ditty of an old Polish song that you might have heard back in those days. Uh, this would have been probably closer to 1900, but this is a, a great old Polish song called the Praha Polka. <laughs> Thank you. 
ends up at Brian Beckles, he uses it to store things in, although I think he's kept it in fairly decent shape. I should get a real photo of that. But my mom used to walk to school from there. And I, you, know, you always hear the stories of kids walking to school. Who walked to school in a country school? Yeah, a lot of you did. You know, Dad talks about it. He says it was uphill both ways. <laughs> yeah, you always hear that. But I knew he was lying because one day he told me he'd killed a bear with a loose leaf notebook on the way to school. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, Farmer's Valley, the cemetery is really all that's left down there uh, besides the house and parts of the old mill. If you go down in the river bottom down there, there are parts of the old mill still back in there. Uh, the cemetery, obviously, here, this is the placard that's out front. Uh, if you get a chance, go down. That's another point of my program is to get everybody out doing, going to these places. I have a whole list at the end here of places I need you to go this summer. Um, this is a story, uh, John, James Waddle, John Brown. Uh, they were from Scotland. I do a whole bunch of Scottish music. We're not going to have time to get into that tonight. Um, the next thing we talk about is the corn and the wheat and how the blacksmith played a part in bringing all that, the farming and the ability to farm down here. Three of the, and these, this kind of surprised me. They, they considered the three main important things that the blacksmith brought here that made it possible for us to farm here was the, the windmill, the self-governing windmill. Now, you could put a well point down. And you'd imagine standing there pumping that thing all day. There was no way she could do it. This is a self-governing windmill developed by a blacksmith in 1854. There again, the six-shot pistol, a weapon that made it possible for us to dominate the local culture here. Like it or not, that's what happened. And then the, the barbed wire, invented by Joseph uh, Glidden uh, back in 1874. If you had animals or anything going on, uh, you, know, you couldn't uh, keep them out of your neighbor's pasture, let alone your own. I have a cool little song called Run Little Rabbit Run about keeping your rabbits out with a shotgun. There again, guns, uh, equipment like that, all with the blacksmith. Buckskin Charlie White, uh, the first blacksmith in Farmer's Valley. Uh, this summer we were able to take a photograph of uh, Dave Ely, who played the part of Buckskin Charlie, my dad and I down there, all in blacksmith regalia down at the Fet Farmer's Valley. I have to see that picture. I'm not sure who took it. I think Sue Ely took it. So, and Charlie, if Charlie would have been there, he'd have been right next to us there. So... <laughs> Uh, implements all came in. This is a planter, horse-drawn planter. You can imagine all the horse rigging, everything that the blacksmith had to take care of on the horses part of it. The machinery equipment on the left, you see the little boy with a tin bucket, all the buckets, anything that had to do with the, the implements inside the home. Hinges, amazing amount of things that the blacksmith had his hands on. Later on, the steam engines came out. Again, this is all part of another program. Um, then we move on to the steamship, and I point out here that the steamship is actually on the Missouri River, ascending the Missouri River, and if you look really close, you can see the river veer off to the left that's actually portraying the Platte River. Um, I do a whole program on steam travel up and down the river. Um, this is a picture of the Western Engineer, the very first steamboat that uh, navigated up the river, it brought all the materials down to Fort Atkinson in 1818 to build the very first cantonment down there. Uh, you can look really close to the the very front of the ship, they had, they had fashioned a, a tin dragon's head on the front of the ship and had routed a lot of the steam from the steam engine through it, and they would blow steam through this dragon head, hoping to scare the local natives. <laughs> of course, we don't have a photo, so this is a drawing of what it may have looked like, but I guess it was quite something. Um, you know, uh, religious people came through Nebraska of all kinds seeking religious freedom as well as our folks did that. Uh, a lot of great music uh, that would have been brought in, uh, classical tunes and that sort of thing. Again, a beautiful ink drawing of my sisters. Uh, you can see the pump organ in front here. Uh, Samuel Butcher took numerous pictures of people carrying pipe organs. I mean, they had a sod house with a pipe organ <coughs> up by Broken Bow someplace. Amazing. And then we go on and talk about the railroad. Uh, the railroad, again, is another whole entire program. Now, the children really love the railroad, and I'm going to do one song off the railroad. Um, here's an early artistic logo concept of the railroad along with the Nebraska State Seal, an early version of the seal. You can see how crude and and uh, the artistic differences have changed. Um, you would see any, anywhere along the railroads, you'd see these worker camps. People would sit down and play music in the evenings. They didn't have a lot of fancy lights, and so when evening came, they would build campfires and set up camp and play music. Um, and here's an interesting song that I'd like to play for you. When the small farm animals first came into the area, they came all on trains. And so the chicken train would roll into town in these big cages, as you see in the back, just like you saw a big semi with a cage on it. So if you can imagine a big train coming in, of course, they sounded something like this. And, of course, everybody would come running to see what the train had brought. But I guess the chicken train was something because the children would all run along the side and pick up feathers as the train came in. So we're going to play the chicken train on this funny little instrument. Anybody remember seeing one of those around? It's a jaw harp, juice harp, yeah. 
I had one little boy raise his hand in a school program and he says, that's a spring out of a car hood. Chicken train, we're running all day. A chicken train, we're running all day. A chicken train, we're running all day, and I can't get on, I can't get off. Chicken train, take your chickens away. A train goes by, the feathers fly. A train goes by, and the feathers fly. Train goes by and the feathers fly and I can't get on, I can't get off. Chicken train taking chickens away. <laughs> what you're seeing now in Nebraska, uh, when people moved here, it took, you know, a, a young man and four or five young strapping boys to farm a section of ground. And so if you had 100 acres, uh, that was a pretty good sized farm back in the day. So a lot of these little sections now had four houses on them. Now, anymore, you guys all know how much you can farm. It's a lot, lot more than that. And these old farms are going away. And in my little place where I grew up down there, I know of a dozen places where farms used to stand when I was a kid and they're no longer there. Or you will see an apple tree, a lilac bush, a piece of fence, and an old foundation. Those are the three or four things that you commonly see from the road. It's like, I see something back there. And I'm, I'm going to ask Tierney to come up if she's here. Is she in the back? Aha. Now, I've asked this young lady to come up and sing a song for, her, for us. And, and we have not practiced this, and she's pretty brave. I guarantee you to come up and do this. But I believe she can do it. <laughs> By the way, let's give Tierney a hand for putting a lot of And have you got it memorized? Oh, you do? Wow. <laughs> okay. All right, well, I, I ran across this beautiful song. It's called The Lilac Bush and the Apple Tree. And again, we have not practiced this, so here we go. We're going to wing this. Need to test it and just make sure it's on. I'll just play it. There you go. I got to tell you something. Your grandpa's awful proud of you. <laughs> A lilac bush and an apple tree were standing in the woods Out on the hill and above the town Where once an old farmhouse stood In the winter the leaves are bare And no one sees the signs Of a house that stood in a garden that grew And life in a spring when the buds came bursting forth and grass grew on the land the lilac spoke to the apple tree as only an old friend can do you think said the lilac this might be the year when someone will build here once more here by the cellar still open and deep there's room for new walls and a floor Of the apple, there are so few who come here on the prairie this way. And when they do, they don't often see why we're growing here so far away. A long time ago, we were planted by hands that worked in the fields and the mills. When the country was young and the people who came built their homes in these sand hills. But now there are cities and roads have come And no one lives here today And the only sign of the farm in the hills Are things not carried away Broken dishes and piles of boards A tin plate and old leather shoe And an apple tree still bending down And a lilac where a Land is your land, 
This land is my land From California To the New York Islands To the Redwood Forest To the Gulf Stream waters Now this land was made to you and me As I was walking That ribbon of highway I saw below me That golden valley I saw above me That golden sky highway Now this land was made Everybody, this land is your land, this land is my land, from California to the New York Islands, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream Water. Now this land was made for you and me. Now this land was made for you and me.